I am not shocked by my first wet dream. I'm something like 12 years old, and it's the 70s, and I've taken this controversial new class called sex ed. I know about sex, the mechanics of it anyway. So my first wet dream, no surprise. What has me completely gobsmacked is the fact that my first wet dream is about Ned, the nerdy boy with the chip front tooth that lives around the corner. <laughs> to call this a dream doesn't do it justice. I can see, hear, smell, I can feel what's happening. And let me tell you, what's happening is fucking amazing. <laughs> It's stuff that maybe I've heard of, but I can never quite convince myself that two people really did together. Here is an actual snippet of dialogue from that dream. 12-year-old me. Just let me put in the chip. <laughs> Ned. Okay, but if I don't like it, you have to stop. Yep, I'm 12 years old, and I am a top. <laughs> Here's the thing, until my first wet dream, I have no idea, no fucking clue that I am attracted to Ned. I have no idea that I am gay. I try to convince myself that dream is a fluke. You hear that sometimes, young men early in puberty go through phases. But my dreams, man, they are a whole other realm of creatively carnal, electrically erotic, delightfully depraved, toe-curling intensity. When the time comes for the wet part of the wet dream, I don't just dribble. I shoot like a pistol. It's like, pow, 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 pow. I could change the channel on my TV from across the room. I'm really sorry to the people over here. <laughs> Anybody need a towel? <laughs> All of my wet dreams are about men, except one, which is about Cher. I have a dream about John, the tall blonde kid who lives on Fernwood Drive, which is followed by a dream about Ron, the bully at my school who completely terrifies me, but is also fucking gorgeous which is followed by a dream about Tom, one of the few jocks who's actually a sweet guy, which is followed by a dream about Mr. Prepard, the t gym teacher with the light brown chest hair that, wears, that shows when he wears a tank top, which is followed by a dream, 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 which is followed by a dream. They just don't stop. Faggot. Queer boy, homo, fairy. These are names that I have been called all my life. The dreams make me realize that the people calling me those names are right. So this would be challenging enough, but there's a complication. I'm 12 years old, and the Lord Jesus Christ is my personal savior. I am an active member of the charismatic movement, which is how Catholics do the born-again Christianity thing. I go to prayer meetings, I sing in tongues, and I know without question that every word in the Bible is literally true. In fact, pretty much everything that every born-again Christian says is true, especially if they say it in a prayer meeting, and super especially if they say it in a King James way. If thou art a man, thou shalt not cover the pleasures of other manly flesh, lest thou be tossed into the pit of a thousand tribulations and agonies. Kind of like that. <laughs> I'm 12 years old. How did I become such a sinner? How did I become so ungodly? How did I bring this on myself? And how do I make these dreams stop? Can things be any worse? <laughs> yeah, they can. My mom develops a friendship with Kathy. Oh, she's real tall, like 5'10", broad-shouldered as a linebacker. 
She's got a heavily pockmarked face, dyed black hair combed into a Laura Petri flip, and she smokes Salem cigarettes. The woman smokes cigarettes named after a city famous for its vicious witch hunts. That's a red flag. <laughs> she and my mom get real close real fast. So close that Kathy feels with, it's within her rights to criticize me. Actually, Kathy feels within, it's within her rights to criticize anyone at any time for anything. I think she see, sees it as her mission. The first conversation I ever have with her goes like this. Frank, the Lord Jesus has given me a message for you. He does not like that shirt you're wearing. She's talking about a t-shirt my sister gave me for my birthday. It has an image of a flying eyeball on it. That shirt is of the devil, and you should burn it. You want to know what's sad? I do it. I burn it. Here's the truth about Kathy. She's a horrible, miserable, angry, vindictive, spiteful woman. She's probably starved for love, affection, and orgasms. She gossips viciously. I've seen her try to turn our entire prayer community against one of its members, a wonderful woman named Pat, who's really sweet and caring. I've heard Kathy say, undermining, downright degrading things to my mother and to me and to any number of people. So why does anybody listen to her? I'll tell you why. Kathy knows her audience. She carries a tattered Bible in her purse. She pulls it out and lays it on the table next to her coffee cup or holds it in her lap when she talks. She doesn't read from it. She just has it there as a prop. Her prissy cruelty is masterfully disguised as Christian concern. Whenever she shreds someone for singing too pretty or laughing too loud or being too sweet to their grandma, and by the way, these are all actual criticisms that I've heard her make. Whenever Kathy guts you and leaves you bleeding, she always prefaces it with, the Lord Jesus has given me a message for you. <laughs> oh, but wait, there's more. Kathy has an amazing talent. She can tell in an instant when something is of the devil. <laughs> For instance, one warm spring day, I come home from school and there's a roaring fire in the fireplace. My mom and Kathy are throwing things into it. Kathy told my mother that any representation, sculpture, or drawing of an owl or a frog are of the devil. Why? Why, you ask? Simple. Owls and frogs are the only creatures that hunt at night. <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. There's like a million creatures that hunt at night. I know this, I absolutely know it. But if a born again says it, it has gotta be true. So I force myself to believe something I know is bullshit. The hunting at night thing turns artistic representations of owls and frogs, not the animals themselves, go figure, just the artistic representations of them into little portals that allow Satan entrance into your life. Naturally, my mom and Kathy went through the entire house and collected every frog and owl they could find. A plastic froggy soap dish, a drawing of a bunch of owls on a branch with the last one hanging upside down and the words, nobody's perfect. <laughs> they feed all that tacky crap into the fire, they say a few prayers and boom, they slam the door on Satan. And all this sounds really sensible, right? But evil spirits are tricky. They can find all kinds of ways into your life. Another time, I come home from school, and it's not just Kathy and my mom. Gloria is there, too. Gloria is a very sweet Italian lady who wears her hair in a kind of low-key buffon, even though it's the 70s and everybody else is doing the blow-dry thing. Gloria is sitting in a chair in the middle of the family room holding my mom's spaghetti lap spaghetti pot in her lap. 
Kathy and my mother stand behind her with their hands on her shoulders. Kathy and my mother have their eyes squeezed shut. So does Gloria, and everyone's praying. But man, there is this weird, crackling energy to this prayer session. Mom and Dad, my mom and Kathy are singing in tongues real loud and real fast, and Kathy's rocking back and forth in her chair, moaning and groaning like she's going to be sick at her stomach. All of a sudden, Kathy says, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind you with the word of God, evil spirit. I bind you and I command you to come out of Gloria. Whoa. An actual exorcism. In my family room. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Gloria throws back her head and she opens her mouth and her voice, wow. I will come out, I will come out, I will come out and I will go into the child. Freaked your ass out, didn't I? <laughs> Imagine how I felt. Because guess what? The child is me. Then Gloria pukes. Not a lot, not projectile, not Linda Blair Green, but yeah, Gloria pukes in my mom's spaghetti pot. So, that's fucked up. <laughs> I sprint out of there, but I make the mistake of going to my room instead of outside. So I hear the rest of the ex exorcism, only it's muffled by two by fours and drywalls, and that's worse. It makes the walls of our house seem like flimsy protection from an evil spirit who just announced that he's gunning for me. I mean, how do I defend myself from that? I, I, hmm? I do the only thing I can think of. My mom keeps extra crucifixes in a drawer in the guest room. Yeah, I live in a house with a drawer full of extra crucifixes. <laughs> I prop one of them above my door frame, and I prop another one above the window, and I put a Bible over the heating vent. But is that enough? I mean, should I jam a towel under the door? Can terry cloth stop a demon? And then, how do I know when it's safe to come out? Will it ever be safe to come out? Will it ever be safe anywhere? What the fuck do I do? That is one long afternoon. And the night that comes after is even longer, and it's sleepless, and it's scary as shit, and it is so fucking lonely. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but Kathy, pretty awesome, right? <laughs> and she's going to do me one more little favor. Kathy's going to give me one more little gift. Another time I come home from school, and Kathy and my mom are sitting in the kitchen. Kathy has her tattered Bible on the table, right between her Salem cigarettes and her cup of coffee. It's a lazy afternoon for her. She's not burning any evil drawings of owls or frogs, and she's not casting out any demons. She's just having coffee. I walk past the kitchen, and Kathy says to my mother, You know, homosexuality is not just a sin. It is of the devil. The gays are not just sinners. They are possessed by the demon of homosexuality. Wow. Kathy just answered a lot of questions for me. Now I know why I am such a freak. Now I know why everyone hates me. Now I know why I am so miserable. Now I know why I am always, always, always failing God. I am possessed by a demon. Shortly after this, Kathy moves away, and my mom loses track of her. So that's the last bit of spiritual venom that Kathy spits in my direction. But it is a doozy. 
This may shock you, but believing in your heart of hearts that you are possessed by a demon does not set you up for a happy life. <laughs> it sets you up for a lot of agonizing struggle. I try so fucking hard to be a good Christian. I try even harder to not be gay. Pointless. It takes a lot of years and years and years, but eventually I accept what I am. I am queer. I am queer. I am queer. First, I accept this, then I embrace it, and then I fall in love with it. And when I do, my Christianity falls away. It's like pulling out a baby tooth. There's a twinge of pain, and this thing that was small and brittle and had been a part of me for far too long is gone. It gets replaced by something big and strong and me. I don't exactly look like that right now. But flash forward to right now. I will tell you what is right now. I am about to turn 55. And Scott Ehrlich, who is right there, a glorious, generous, thoughtful, caring, sexy man who is far better than I deserve, has been my partner for 30 awesome years. And dig this. Listen to this. We are married. We've been married since 2014. Woohoo! I live an imperfect but mostly wonderful life. But some ba sometimes I look back on the time when I struggled so fucking hard to be something I'm not, when I was certain I was spiritually doomed. Sometimes I look back on the people who made that time so much harder than it needed to be. Sometimes I look back on Kathy. <laughs> and I realize I have something I want to say to her. And it's this. Fuck you, Kathy. <laughs> Fuck you. In a second, I am going to ask you all to say that with me because I know something. I know every person here has a Kathy in their life. Some man or woman, some mean-spirited, pinched little bitch who stepped on you, squashed you, held you down. Fuck them! Now... A lot of these Cathy's are dead, so we're going to have to be really loud to that, for them to hear us. Just in case you forgot your line. No, wait, 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 wait. First, get your guns out. You're going to say it with me on three. One, two, three. Fuck you, Cathy! Fuck you!